for Thursday, the three by-elections. Very rare to get three by-elections on uh, the same day. And Rishi Sunak, of course, was facing down the prospect of becoming the first prime minister since Harold Wilson in 1968 to lose three by-elections on the same day. And you will have heard and gathered by now, I suspect that that has not quite happened. And indeed, a lot of the headlines that we're seeing and a lot of the analysis that we're hearing, a fair bit of it anyway, and indeed, perhaps what the government wants you to hear, and perhaps I suspect and would wager and posit that they are winning the spin war this morning with Rishi Sunak, as we've already heard, and we're going to hear a bit more from him, heading to Uxbridge pretty quickly uh, and dominating the morning news cycle. We're hearing the headline that this was a bit of a score draw. One all. Lib Dems win in Somerton. Labour win in North Yorkshire in uh, Selby. And the Tories win unexpectedly in Uxbridge in West London, just by 500 or so votes. Now, although, of course, that is technically true, it is one for one for one. That is, I would put to you, and we're going to unpack it all, as you might imagine, on today's show. But that is a mistake to look at it that way. And the reason is, is because Uxbridge tells us vanishingly little, really, about the future direction of politics and about the uh, general election which is coming. It tells us more about what politics after the next election and perhaps before might look like in terms of environmental policies. That's something else we're going to get to on today's show. But in terms of the actual general election, let's focus our attention there to begin with. It tells us little because that by-election in Uxbridge was effectively became, and the Conservatives did this very well, a referendum on a local policy a policy which, where Labour were in a very unusual position in that by-election, where they found themselves almost as an opposition party being in a quasi-incumbent position, which doesn't sound very comfortable. And indeed, it wasn't very comfortable for them because they have a mayor of London who is implementing, whatever you think about the rights and wrongs about it, an unpopular policy, generally speaking, in outer London, uh, where there is a charging for cars or for older vehicles, older, the most polluting vehicles, ULEZ. And as a result, we can see that the Conservatives, as I say, managed to make it a referendum and they won. But then look at what's going on in Selby and look at what's going on in Somerton. These are two very different seats, one in the south of England, one in the north of England. To take Selby first, this was an extraordinary win from the Labour Party. I've heard shadow ministers on the airwaves this morning sort of being beaten up about what's happened in Uxbridge. I mean... OK, of course, there are questions for the Labour Party in terms of their policy towards ULEZ and all of those sorts of things. Of course there is. But it is rather detracting from what was nothing less than a sensational victory in Selby. Numerical terms, the Labour Party has never overturned a majority as big against the Conservatives before. It was a 24-point swing. This is a seat which is as safe as houses for the Conservative Party. There would barely, if that were repeated at a general election, there would barely be a Conservative MP left. Of course, it won't be repeated at a general election. But if even if it was anything close to it, 24-point swing is far in excess of the 10-point swing that the Labour Party needs for a majority of one, which is still a very big swing, by the way, bigger than what Tony Blair achieved back in 1997. And it's way, way in excess of the 7-point swing that the Labour Party achieved, uh, that the Labour Party needs in order to become the biggest party. It is also larger, even larger, than where the Labour Party is in terms of the national polling at the moment, which would indicate an 18-point swing. So it was a catastrophic loss for the Conservative Party and in just the sort of seat that, quite frankly, even just a couple of years ago, if we'd been sat and having this conversation, it would have been unimaginable that the Labour Party would have been winning a seat like this. Rural, in the north of England, not in the Red Wall, but in the whatever the equivalent of the Blue Wall is in the north of England. Uh, older voters, uh, fewer graduates, affluent. It is exactly the sort of seat, it's beyond the sort of seat that the Labour Party needs to win in order to get a majority. This is a majority with bells and whistle, whistles on, if they can keep Selby and seats like Selby at the next general election. That is the harbinger of what is to come, at least at the moment, as politics looks. Not Uxbridge. And Somerton as well. The Lib Dems, again, we've got used to these extraordinary Lib Dem victories, haven't we? We had North Shropshire, we had Chesham and Amersham, we have Tiverton, you know, achieving 20, 25 point. In this case, a 29 point swing. The sixth biggest swing in Lib Dem history. And they are very good in Lib Dem by-election history, I should say. And they are very, very good at winning by-elections. And what this tells us is that if any further evidence were needed 
the Lib Dems are back as a by-election winning machine. They are back in the south of England in a big, big way. We've seen that in uh, the local election results as well in repeated cycles. And it also tells us they're not just back in the southeast in new territory. They are returning in their old heartlands of the southwest. We saw it in Tiverton, as I say, in Devon. Now we're seeing it in Somerton, in Somerset. We also know from these results, we can see that Brexit as a salient political issue, at least on the Leave side, is starting to retreat. Because again, just a couple of years ago, it would have seemed unimaginable that the, at that time, vaguely Remain a Labour Party and the extremely Remain a Lib Dems would be winning in seats like this, which were heavily Leave voting. On the Leave side, Brexit saliency is retreating. Now, of course, there are still questions for both parties in terms of how this translates into a general election for the Lib Dems. They're notorious for being able to struggle to translate Lib Dem uh, by-election victories into general election victories because their res party resources are more split and so on. But nonetheless, if you are looking at these results, the only th way that you can truly look at them is as a bad, very bad night for the Conservative Party. Even in Uxbridge, remember, there was a near seven-point swing against them. And even if you include Uxbridge and you add them all together, you're looking at an 18 percentage point reduction in the Conservative vote, which roughly aligns to where the national opinion polls are. These election results tell us that the national polls are correct. The government is in a very, very deep hole. Don't believe the spin.